Winning Cures Everything. Now for your hosts, Gary and Chris. Welcome in. It is the Friday, May 7th edition of Winning Cures Everything. I am your host, Gary Seegers. We have a lot to discuss on this episode. And, of course, I am riding solo. It is my week to do the Thursday solo show. So I am diving in, and I'm going to do it a little bit differently than I typically do. And I'm going to hit a ton of topics tonight. I'm talking a bunch of them. Typically, we go, you know, four or five because Chris and I like to talk, and we will talk for a while. But on this episode, we are I'm, I'm going to talk about everything. Just everything that happened on Thursday. It was a crazy, crazy day with a lot to discuss. So, of course, i got to hit it all. Before we do that, though, go ahead and tell you winningcureseverything.com is our website. Make sure that you go and check it out. You would certainly be doing me a favor. There is a link in the description if you're watching this on YouTube or listening to the podcast. So go ahead and check that out for us. Uh, if you are not subscribed on the podcast or on YouTube or wherever, right? We're on Twitch, we're on Periscope, we're on Twitter, we're on whatever. Make sure that you do that. You can find all of that over at winningcureseverything.com. We also do a college football show every single week on sportsbookreview.com. You can find it by searching out SBR Picks on YouTube or just go to sbrpicks.com slash NCAAF. That will be the quickest way to do so. All of our college football gambling content is over there. Very easy to find. You would be helping us out. So I would certainly appreciate that if you would go and check that out. Start off today's show with... Sad news, you never want to start a show like this, but uh, Jake Ellinger, who is Sam Ellinger's little brother, linebacker at the University of Texas, uh, he was found dead outside of campus today. And th- so far, the reports are there's no foul play, anything like that. Obviously, uh, your thoughts wander to uh, what might have happened. You know, if it was a heart attack or, or some kind of medical condition, you would think that something like that would have come out. Um, so who knows exactly what happened, but you hate to hear something like that. Sam obviously just drafted last week by the Indianapolis Colts. Um, it just it, There's nothing to really say. So our, our thoughts, prayers, you know, hearts, everything else go out to the Ellinger family. That is something that you never want to discuss, and it is rough. So... Uh, we'll be thinking about those in Austin that are affected by this, and uh, and the loss of him will be felt. You know, he he's playing, or was playing for a a team that he grew up kind of idolizing, um, and his brother just you know went to the NFL. I mean, it seemed like things were good, but who who knows what actually happened there? So, uh, not good. But we'll uh, we'll move on from that. The Georgia governor Brian Kemp signed the. Uh, Signed, I guess, the House Bill 617 is what it's called. It's the NIL law in Georgia. And this is a little different from what we have seen thus far in Florida, Alabama, Mississippi, California, et cetera, et cetera. And we, I talked to several lawyers today, and uh, Chris reached out to a couple as well, because what we read, what, what was posted online, looked like a complete hot mess. I cannot figure this thing out, right? It, it, so what I have gathered from reading a bunch of different articles about this and whatnot is the schools in the state of Georgia have the option of, let me see if I phrase this correctly, they have the option of pooling and redistributing 75% of a player's NIL contract that they sign. So say JT Daniels, who is the quarterback for the University of Georgia, if he were to sign a, you know, $1,000 deal for an Instagram post, the University of Georgia can collect $750 of that $1,000 contract and then redistribute it to other athletes at the university. From what I could read, they have the ability to do that, but I don't believe that they have to do that. I don't know why any... College would, because this would seem like it would be a massive, massive um, recruiting issue. Like, obviously, people will use this against you in recruiting by saying, hey, you go over there, you know, 
you sign a ten thousand dollar contract for social media or for advertising or whatever, and the school can take seventy five hundred of it. Why would you want to do that when you could come over here, one state over, whether it's Florida or Alabama or wherever? Why would you go there when your ten thousand dollar contract can only be worth twenty five hundred? And you could come over here and you would make the full ten thousand. It, it's very iffy. Um, I've been trying to get some clarification on that. We haven't found anybody just yet that uh, that will come on with us to talk about it because it, from exact words from a uh, from an attorney that I spoke to today was this is a hot mess. So <laughs> take for take that for what uh, for what it is, but it certainly seems like a disaster. Uh, we will move on from there because as of right now, there's not a whole lot you know extra to that. Let's talk about Adam Schefter. NFL insider goes on with Dan Patrick today. Obviously, last week, uh, the day of the draft. This was one week ago, right? I'm recording this on Thursday night. You're listening to it on Friday, May the 7th. One week ago, and one day, eight days from Friday, I guess, whatever, last Thursday, the day of the first round of the NFL draft, Adam Schefter released this bombshell story about Aaron Rodgers not wanting to come back to play for the Green Bay Packers. He goes on Dan Patrick today, and he admitted that there was no new information that day. He had been gathering information, and that was the day that he decided that he was going to release it. So he goes on NFL Live on draft day and releases that information, puts out that story. It's in the afternoon. I want to say like 2.30 p.m. Central Time, somewhere around there, whatever it is. And it absolutely... Uh, took the NFL world by storm, took the sports world by storm, and it has been going ever since. And Aaron Rodgers, of course, came out, said that his camp did not release it. Uh, A lot of people thought that that might have been fluky, but Adam Schefter admitted, like, this was not from the Rodgers camp. This was from uh, league sources and team sources, etc. And this was just a whole gathering, uh, a whole pool of information that he had gathered. And... He decided to release it that day. Now, why would you release it on that day? His reasoning was, you know, it's it's the biggest day for NFL coverage and blah, blah, blah. Like, if you want it to reach the most people, obviously. And certainly it works. But, man, by releasing it that day, it takes away so much from the NFL draft because the story all night, everything that you looked at, that the Packers did, that the Broncos did, that the Raiders did, that it, it, et cetera, et cetera, all these teams that maybe might have been involved in a trade, that overshadows all of it because then you're thinking, okay, did did the Broncos just draft Pat Sertan to trade him to Green Bay after the June first date when the cap hit won't be as much or what? Like, what is the deal? So you start thinking of all these different things, and obviously it made it much more entertaining for just us innocent bystanders that are that are just trying to have fun with the draft and we enjoy the conspiracy theory aspect of it, but. It's, it's very strange to come out and admit that you held on to information until a day like the first round of the NFL draft when there are so many other stories going on in that league anyway. Why would you? I mean, you could have done this on Monday. You would have had three days of talk. Well, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Really, four days of talk before Thursday night to be able to get this Adam, this Adam Schefter, Aaron Rodgers, Green Bay Packers story to circulate. And then you can actually focus on the draft that night. So there was a ton of big news. Obviously, Tim Tebow going to the Jags or working out for the Jags became a a storyline. But the Aaron Rodgers thing dropped after that, and then Tebow stuff just went away. It's crazy to think about, but it I'm I'm surprised that he did that. Um, I don't know that I really fully understand the business side of it, uh, because why would you want that many stories at one time? Because you know that the NFL draft is going to stir up discussion. So why not just stick with that and then hold on to the Roger stuff maybe a little longer or release it? I, I, don't, I don't understand it. I don't understand. He said he'd had it for a long time. Doesn't make sense to me. Texas A&M coach Jimbo Fisher came out to the Houston Touchdown Club and he was asked about beating Alabama and whether or not they were just going to have to wait until Saban retires or, you know, what the plan is, basically. Because, you know, Jimbo's going to be there for seven more seasons. He's been there for three years now. He said, no, we're going to beat their ass even while Saban's there. And that that was his quote. We're going to beat their ass. 
Which is funny in and of itself. We could obviously talk about that in and of itself. Lane Kiffin tweeted and was like, what are you doing? Like, what, this, is, this is the problem. Everybody does this. Everybody ends up getting their rear ends whipped. Jimbo Fisher has not been within three scores of Alabama since he got to College Station. Last year, their, their playoff worthiness was a 28-point loss to Alabama. That was their only loss on the schedule, and they lost by four touchdowns. I mean, it's, you know, is what it is. So Saban, his response when he was asked about it, obviously a bunch of TV cameras around, and there was a reporter that said, Jimbo Fisher said that uh, they were going to beat your butt, is what she said. And Saban smiled and smirked and looked at her and said, in golf? And it absolutely cracked me up. If you have not seen the video, you need to go check it out. It's on my Twitter. You can follow me at GaryWCE. Uh, but it was a classic response. And then, of course, he delves off into coach speak and whatnot. The typical stuff that you would hear, well, he's done a good job recruiting, and Jimbo obviously is a good coach. And, you know, eventually I'll probably get beat by one of my assist or former assistants and blah, 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 blah. You, you've heard it all before. But that is, it was fun. It's, this is what makes college football so entertaining is when we do get stories like this, and there are so few of them because it seems like some of these coaches are very mechanical. You hear the same stuff over and over and over. They're robotic almost. And Saban especially is a big part of it. But him responding with in golf was classic, and I absolutely loved it. So uh, definitely go check that out. The video, again, on my Twitter feed, it's at GaryWCE. Very easy to find. Uh, go ahead and do us a favor. Uh, like the video. Subscribe. You know, I, I waited until halfway through or, or part of the way through to go ahead and ask you. But that certainly helps us out. If you're watching on YouTube, like it. If you are on the podcast, go ahead and hit subscribe. Leave a nice five-star review. That would certainly help us out for sure. It gets us out in front of more people. We're trying to grow this thing. And, and we certainly could use your help with that. That's our biggest marketing budget is word of mouth. You guys are the advertisers for us, and we cannot thank you enough for that. Uh, moving on from there, obviously, we're big combat sports fans over here at Winning Cures Everything. Chris and I watch the UFC stuff. Whenever there is a good boxing match, you know, we will watch that. I'll probably be watching the Canelo fight uh, against Billy Joe Shaver this weekend. There's, you know, there's some stuff going on right now, and we're not too much into the novelty game. You know, we the Jake Paul Ben Askren thing was whatever, but it it certainly stirred up a lot of hype, a lot of people talking about it. But it it was not a real professional fight. It it's just a spectacle, and boxing has always kind of been part spectacle. Well, the press conference for the Logan Paul Floyd Mayweather fight that's coming up in June. What one of the press conferences was today, and Jake Paul was there, and Jake Paul is the one that. Everybody thinks is like the real boxer, and what he's the one that knocked out Ben Askren. So of course he's been talking a lot, and he was at the last UFC fight, and he uh, he has stirred up a lot of controversy and a lot of talk in in the combat sports world. So of course he and Floyd Mayweather start going at each other, and and Jake Paul is significantly taller than than Floyd Mayweather, but Jake and him are going back and forth, face to face, you know, whatever, and Jake grabs his hat, and starts to run off with it. Now, it, it was entertaining to watch for a, a quick 20-second clip or whatever it was online. If it had been real, the money team would have absolutely beaten his ass. That, that bunch that Floyd Mayweather has around him is a scary bunch of dudes. So if I had thought that this was actually a legit thing, that's what would have happened. But instead, they just chase him down, they get the hat back, it's whatever. And and then, of course, he's tweeting afterwards, gotcha hat. And it's comical. It stirs up talk. Obviously, I'm talking about it right now because everybody is talking about it. It's something that people are interested in for whatever reason. The Paul brothers, who are just YouTube influencers, basically, I think is what they're referred to as, I, I don't understand the hype behind it. You know, the fact that they can actually win a little bit, like, that's that's cool, but they haven't really boxed real boxers yet. They're kind of hand-picking opponents at this point. Logan Paul doing an exhibition against Floyd Mayweather. At, look, when you can draw up that kind of coin, 
for a fight, for a pay-per-view, I mean, uh, cheers to you. Cheers to you. But yeah, that, that whole thing was a debacle, and all of these will be until we get that fight. Uh, speaking on that, on the combat sports stuff, stuff that we have not mentioned before, Teofimo Lopez against George uh, Cambosos has been postponed to June 19th, which is really strange to do this a month before the fight, but they, they pushed it back two weeks for whatever reason. I have not seen a real reason for it. Uh, but on top of that, uh, the Nate Diaz and Leon Edwards fight that was supposed to be on the next UFC card on May 15th, that's next Saturday, uh, that has been postponed as well. Now, obviously, the card is still happening, but Nate Diaz and Leon Edwards is going to be on June 12th now. Uh, and I believe that's the Izzy Adesanya fight. So, you know, a, a little strange. I'm sure the people that are in Houston that sold that event out, going to guess there's some of those that are not real happy with the fact that the Nate Diaz fight is not happening. It, it's his big return. A lot of people were going out specifically for that fight. Uh, I was going to buy it specifically for that fight. Don't get me wrong. I'd love to see Charles Oliveira against Michael Chandler, and I, I might still buy it, but we shall see. We shall see. So, um, moving on from there, I got to talk about something that's happening near us. Let me tell you about Whataburger opening in South Haven, which is just a few miles south of Memphis, Tennessee, which is where we are located. Whataburger, obviously, big time regional Texas based hamburger uh, fast food restaurant. Whataburger is fantastic, and I am super excited about the fact that we are finally getting one. Every time I go down to Jackson, Mississippi, or several other places, uh, uh, going down towards the beach, uh, towards 30A, of course, Destin, Gulf Shores, whatever, uh, we always stop in there. Anytime I am in Texas, we stop at Whataburger. It's great. You know, especially for somebody that doesn't, is, is not where they can get it all the time. I love it. I would love to, uh, to be able to eat this a little more regularly. And now... You know, there's going to be one that's like 15 minutes from my house. So, if I really get an inkling for it, I can run down there and get one. And that is always nice, right? So, it kind of made me think about my top five regional restaurants that I wish were national. Or at least that I wish were in Memphis, right? Because in traveling, uh, I've gotten to eat at these places before. You know, I'll go ahead and give you my top five. If you want to jump in the comments... Do that, or leave us a review on Apple Podcasts, whatever, uh, Spotify, if they do po if they do uh, reviews or whatever. Or you can reach out to us on Twitter. I'm at Gary WCE or, uh, WCE or at Winning Cures. Uh, my top five regional restaurant chains or fast food restaurant chains that I would prefer be national goes like this. My number one is Shake Shack. Now, I, I, I didn't put, I'll go ahead and tell you this. My honorable mention was uh, Super Burger that you can find in the Bay Area. I, I've been out to San Francisco several times, have eaten there both times. Uh, Super Duper Burger, Super Burger, whatever it is. It's fantastic. So I, I don't know much about it. I think it's only in the Bay Area, but it's awesome. So, but either way, uh, I've eaten at Shake Shack. That's my number one. Shake Shack in Chicago, Shake Shack in San Francisco, Shake Shack in Vegas. Uh, been to all of them. Fantastic everywhere. Uh, their Shack Burger, their Chicken Shack sandwich, unbelievable. Unbelievable. The fact that that food could come out of a fast food place, um, if you want to consider this a fast food place. But either way, it is really, really good stuff, and I am a massive fan. So, uh, so yes, Shake Shack would be in a, uh, my number one. Number two, uh, on the way to Chicago, on the way to uh, Indiana, on the way to multiple places, I have been able to stop at Culver's, and I love Culver's. They have got their butter burgers and their frozen custard. Those are the two things, and obviously they've got everything there. Everything. So that's my number two. I absolutely love uh, Culver's. Number three, Jack's, which you can find all throughout the state of Alabama, but I don't think you can find it many places else, right? I think it's mainly just an Alabama-based fast food place. I absolutely love Jack's. I, I cannot express enough. Their chicken biscuits in the mornings, their hamburgers, uh, the french fries, like everything about them. I, I can get almost anything at Jack's, and it's good. So I would recommend that one. My number four is Bojangles. The only Bojangles that I get, and I've done this multiple times now, uh, most of my connecting flights, whether I'm going, you know, back west or I'm going uh, up to New York or whatever, most of my connecting flights 
tend to go through Charlotte for whatever reason. And the Bojangles in the Charlotte airport is awesome. Absolutely love it. But you don't really get a bunch of them outside of that area, right? The North Carolina, what the, the East Coast kind of spot there. Um, not the Northeast, but, you know, North Carolina, Virginia, whatever. Bojangles, uh, their chicken biscuits are ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. And I think that Bojangles and Hardee's and Carl's Jr., if I'm not mistaken, are all kind of in that same group. We've got a Hardee's here in town. It's not the same. It's not the same thing. Uh, Bojangles is awesome. Uh, Hardee's is, it, if you get the right one, you know, pretty good. But they're, it's not the same food. So, at least not to me, from what I have been able to tell. So, uh, And then my number five is really an odd one, if you don't know. But if you know, you know. And that would be uh, Danny and Clyde's. It's, it's Poe Boys. It's basically a gas station that you can find around New Orleans. I've eaten at the one in Metairie. I've eaten at the one in Harvey, um, which is basically right across the Mississippi River from like downtown New Orleans, from the French Quarter. There's It's a gas station. You go in, and you can order basically any kind of Poe Boy that you want. I've got the menu pulled up. They got The one that I have eaten, and I've done it both times, is the half catfish and half shrimp Poe Boy. And then along with that, you've got a cheeseburger po' boy, you've got a surf and turf po' boy, you've got a southern fried chicken po' boy, ham and cheese po' boy, smoked turkey breast po' boy, I mean, all kind of different stuff. And it is awesome. And it is a mom and pop kind of place. There's not a ton of them. But man, if you hadn't eaten there, it's it, a fast food po' boy, you would not think is great. But what they do is really, really good. So that is my, my five recommendations for regional fast food chains that I wish were national. So jump in the comments, like I said, with yours. I want to hear your top five. I want to hear the ones that uh, that you would recommend whenever we are traveling around because I do tend to do that. Uh, I used to travel much more. I'm going to try and get back in the swing of it, obviously, after pandemic and all that kind of mess. We'll be covering more football games. We'll be covering a lot more stuff with this sport. So definitely toss that out there. Uh, jumping on to the next topic the Chicago Bears have played at Soldier Field since 1971. And today, the mayor of Arlington Heights, and Arlington Heights is just a bit west of Evanston, where, which is where Northwestern University is located. Um, it's an hour or so outside of Chicago. The mayor of Arlington Heights has put together, there's a group that's come in, and they are wiping out I believe, uh, uh, an old track or whatever, and they are going to build a new entertainment stadium complex area. And he said that there is a strong possibility that the Bears are going to move out of Chicago over to this new complex in Arlington Heights. There are multiple other NFL teams that have done this, right? The Arizona Cardinals moved out of Phoenix, went over to Glendale. The Dallas Cowboys are in Arlington, Texas right now, which is, you know, a little bit of a drive outside of Dallas, but is still between, you know, Dallas and, uh, and Fort Worth. Um, there, there's other teams that do this. I never would have thought that Chicago, the Chicago Bears would be a team that would do that. Um, by the way, the 49ers are really located in San Jose. You know, it, it, that's a little ways down. Um, so you see this everywhere, but I, Chicago, you know, the Bears kind of are their team. Now, it's it's a Cubs town. We get that. But there's just something about the Bears and Soldier Field and that old, archaic uh, architecture. Like, everything about that place is genuine. It feels like the city. It feels like the Bears. The Bears feel like that. It's right there uh, on the lake. I mean, it's gorgeous over there where it's actually sitting. I was a little shocked that they would be moving out of there. And I understand they've been there for a very long time. I mean, we're talking 50 years at this point. Um, do I have my math right on that? 71 through 21? Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, 50 years. So I was a little bit perplexed as to why they would move. But if you're talking money, if you're talking about a new, updated, brand new stadium with all state-of-the-art stuff and whatnot, I suppose it makes sense. It would still shock me to see them actually move out of downtown Chicago. But I guess stranger things have happened. So who who actually knows what will come of this? But uh, 
But that news coming out from the mayor of Arlington Heights was shocking to me, at the very least. And finally, we will close out with, I guess you can call it pop culture kind of stuff, but but media news for the most part. This isn't really sports-related. Uh, first off, Melinda Gates. The So the story here, Melinda Gates and Bill Gates are getting a divorce. And apparently, the entire family, uh, all of their kids and Bill's family and whatever else, everybody is mad at Bill. So before this all went public, I, this has been going on apparently for months. Bill was going to announce it back in March. He waited this long, whatever. But before Bill announced it, Melinda Gates and the entire rest of the family, all the kids, everybody else, everybody was invited to skip out on all of the press coverage and all the divorce drama and all of that, everybody trying to ask him questions, trying to get in touch with him, whatever. They were dodging all of that, and they are on a private island. It's a, a resort island that costs $132,000 a night to rent. And they were going to go there for several weeks. Kind of shocking, the amount of money that something like that. I mean, I, I could not ever imagine in my wildest dreams being able to do something like that. But the other side of this is everybody was invited except for Bill. Bill is here in the United States having to do his own thing. He's not on an island. Obviously, he, he's got money. He can go to a private island if he wants to, whatever. But a little shocking. The, the price tag on a private island rental being $132,000 a night is beyond incredible. Uh, cheers to her for spending that money. I'm all about it. Uh, you know, obviously you hate to see anybody get divorced and whatnot. This seems like a very strange situation. But, hey, cheers to her for getting out of town, getting out of Dodge, where she doesn't have to worry about all the mess that's going on with the press and whatnot, with all the national media that wants to know what happened and what are we going to do with the foundations and et cetera, et cetera. It's a bunch of mess. Bunch of mess, I'll tell you that. And finally... We will close out with this. Fox has bought Clay Travis's Outkick Media LLC company. So Outkick.com, all that stuff, all his podcasts, whatever else, all the media stuff that they are doing, they have done a complete overhaul over the past year, I guess you could say. And they brought in Sam Savage from Sav Adventures. And, you know, this is all based in Nashville. And they... Clay Travis ran that site by himself for a very long time. Now, I, I respect his work ethic and what he has been able to build. Obviously, a, I have been a big fan of his writing. It's, his books on Rocky Top and Dixieland Delight are regulars here at the house. Uh, I don't delve too much into the politics and whatnot that he does. Obviously, he has found a niche for that. But his sport takes and whatnot, I typically enjoy because that's, that's what he means them as and that's what they are. They are entertainment. Uh, I have been following him since the Clay Nation stuff, and to see him go from somebody that was writing a weekly article or two times a week article for CBSSports.com with Clay Nation to what this has become is is kind of mind blowing. You know, obviously it is something that we would like to do with Winning Cures Everything. We want to find a way, and we don't know exactly the right method to do so. Um, yeah, we would love to hear your input if you want to jump in on the comments. Uh, or, obviously, again, hit me up on Twitter, at GaryWCE. There, I don't have enough hours in the day. I will tell you that. He uh, he built this thing, and he works incredibly hard at it. And uh, I got to tell you, I mean, I am I respect it. I certainly respect what he has built business-wise, for sure. Uh, but trying to do Winning Cures Everything, you know, we try and get out as much content as humanly possible with Chris and myself being able to tag-team this thing. But there's articles that we want to write. There's topics that we want to hit on. There's things that we want to do that sometimes we do not have time for. So, you know, if you have ideas, if you have things that you think would help us grow, uh, besides, you know, you sharing it with a friend or sharing the show out on your social media, whatever, we would certainly appreciate hearing from you. You can reach me at GaryWCE or you can email me, Gary at winningcureseverything.com because we would like to be in that position one day. You know, we are still, you know, in our infancy. We baby steps, right? We have been doing this for it'll be five years in July, and that's 
pretty nuts to think about. You know, obviously we have joined on with Sportsbook Review. We are covering college football for them. Um, you know, before that we've joined in with uh, with Tunica, Mississippi, and whatnot. We've we've been all over the place, and we have been very blessed. We've been very lucky with what we've been able to accomplish thus far. But we are continuing to grow. We are continuing to try new things. Obviously, you will see our schedules change here and there. You will see us, you know, do more videos. You will see us do more podcasts. You will see us try and come up with a different way to stay on a regular schedule so that you guys get more content from us, more regular content that you can look forward to uh, and that you know will be there when we say it's actually going to be there. That's the biggest thing. So we would certainly appreciate hearing from you. Jump in the comments. And again, hit me up on Twitter at GaryWCE, or you can tweet the show at Gear or at Winning Cures. Excuse me. With that said, I think I'm going to get out of here. It's uh, it's 30 minutes, but man, we hit a lot tonight. There were a lot of topics for us to discuss. Very fun. Uh, didn't start off on a, a great note, but um, but ended up with with a good conversation, I think. So hopefully, you all have enjoyed the show. If you have, share it out. Tell a friend. We would certainly appreciate you for doing that. Uh, if you didn't like the show. I'd just delete it. Don't tell anybody. That would also help out. That would also help out. Go to winningcureseverything.com. Go to sbrpicks.com slash NCAAF. And hopefully, all of you will take care of yourselves, take care of each other, and all of your tickets will cash this weekend. Thanks for checking out Winning Cures Everything. If you want to keep up with us, hit subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. Visit the website at winningcureseverything.com or you can like us on Facebook or follow us at Winning Cures, at Gary WCE, or at Chris B. Giannini on Twitter. Share out the show, leave a nice review, and make sure to comment and tweet at us.